During my time as a journalist, I've had the pleasure of working with the Drakenstein team, both as far as the preparation of the yearlings for the national yearling sale and the preparations going before South Africa's most prestigious weight for age 1600 meter contest. Of course, none other than the Lormorans Queen's Plate. And the standards that their team practiced are of the highest excellence. So when something goes wrong, it is definitely nothing to do with the preparation and planning. It's one of those things that happens from time to time that nobody has any control over, or do they? There are, of course, the conspiracy theories, but the racing control manager of the National Horse Racing Authority is Arnold Hyde, who tells us of the official standpoint of the National Horse Racing Authority regarding the unfortunate delay to the 2020 renewal of the Lormorans Queen's Plate. Certainly the Queen's Plate is a, is a race with, that everyone looks forward to. This year, I think more so than ever before, it, it had the it billing of a, of a race where our superstars were participating in the Queen's Plate and everything made for a wonderful race. Unfortunately, what uh, transpired put a bit of a dampener on it. Uh, circumstances prevailed which no one could have predicted. It seemed like the racing guards maybe were not happy um, up, upstairs because um, in all of the years that I've been racing and in all the years that trainers like Mark de Kock and stipendary stewards like Ernie Rodriguez has uh, been racing, this has never happened before. Uh, the racing world was waiting for this race. Uh, their eyes were upon us at Kenilworth Racecourse in anticipation of this race. And to have a, a race uh, start um, over 20 minutes late is obviously something that we would never predict, never plan for. I'm sure that you would appreciate uh, the stress levels in the Stipendry Stewards boardroom were, were very high as well. And I think um, I've read on one of the sites where Mark de Kock uh, felt that stress uh, when he was in the boardroom with the Stipes um, to see what was happening at the start. So it wasn't an easy time for the officials on duty. Uh, certainly wasn't easy for myself as well at present in the Stipendry Stewards boardroom. But um, hopefully our interaction today can explain what happened and um, you know, put it out there to the public. Okay, so Hawam leaves the parade ring early, as was always going to be the plan. Um, he leaves without incidents, as he did for the Vodacom Durban July, um, as he did for his return to racing at the Vaal, as he did when he beat mm. Bunker Hunt in the Premiers. Anyway, to cut a long story short, he goes off to the start, he arrives there first, and... We pick up the action with Elder de Mayer's GoPro camera on Twister Fate, tracking Do It Again with the lead pony as he's become used to. And we actually hear the plate come off yes. and the vehicle is traveling in close proximity yeah, yeah. and they recover the plate fortunately because as we all know, that's one of the fundamentals of reshoeing horses to have the plate that he was originally carted to race in. Your take on that particular incident? Yeah, so having the opportunity of watching the visuals now that you've presented to me, I, I can see our starter arriving in his vehicle alongside the race course. You can hear the plate coming off. And um, in hindsight proves now this was the catalyst for all the events that transpired following this. But it was treated seriously the minutes that uh, it happened and became um, apparent to the official that it had happened, that it needed to be corrected and action needed to be taken. The refitting of the plate um, happened very timelessly. It was yeah. a, it was well expedited. Yes. Uh, but while that was going on, other things were coming into play. Yeah, we, we had a bushfire that that uh, that, that had um, got out of control along uh, Wetting Road um, at Kenilworth Racecourse. You you start having concerns about the quality of the air and the density of the smoke. Of course, it can affect the visuals. So you start having concerns about the quality of the visuals. Um, which the officials need to ensure that the race is, is a clean race, that all integrity levels are at the highest uh, degree. And then you have, uh, following that, um, the incident regarding pack leader also casting a shoe. Um, you have uh, Hawam slipping his bridle. You have the bridle and do it again breaking. All these events in the, the space of, um, of some 10 to 15 minutes occurring which ha had an impact on the starting time of the race, which, as I said before, was 20 minutes after the official starting time. So for so many things to happen at the start of one race is certainly unheard of. Um, you know, for one or two incidents to happen, 
in, in a race is unfortunate, but it, it can be accepted and we can correct the necessary um, issues that have presented themselves. But for, for all of these events to happen at the same time is really something that I haven't uh, had to, to be part of before um, or had to handle before. And it was very, very unfortunate on the day. Okay, do it again. We know um, Justin Snaith has referred to him as unconscious. That's how laid back he is at home. A different animal on the race course, needs a lead pony. Hawam obviously behaved impeccably in the premiers where there were lots of fractious horses. Mm. He had a real solid test there and he came through that with flying colours. But this was just too long for him. Yes, I think so. Um, you know, Mr. De Kock has always said, um, following the incidents that have happened before with Hawam, that he wants him to be treated like a horse, which of course he, he is, you know, to, to settle down and behave like a horse. And I think they've done the necessary work at home sure. and we've seen the improvement. Yeah. Um, but as I said before, these are, these are supercharged athletes, are race horses, in, in particular a race like this, you know, they are timed to the minute. And um, with, with these superstars, generally they do have the odd quirk. Things do happen and, and we need to plan accordingly. We need to react as quickly as we can to circumstances that prevail, as long as um, the welfare and safety of horse and rider is not compromised at all. And when we were informed, um, that um, twist of fate had cost us on, on the way to the start. You know, there was a degree of apprehension about, you know, how w that would affect the starting time of the race. And then the following sequence was the do it again incident with the bridle. Um, and then the, the pack leader uh, incident with the, the, the first occasion of, of, uh, of casting a shoe. And then Hawam slipping his bridle. And then pack leader casting a shoe again after it had been refitted by the farrier. So it, it was uh, an ongoing update from, from the start uh, via radio that the stewards received in the boardroom. Um, then it was also brought to the attention that undercover agent was quite fractious at the start as well. So there was a lot happening at the start. Um, you, you could sense by um, the officials' voices that were coming through on radio that it was very, very stressful. Panic stricken. Panic stricken. Yeah. They couldn't believe what was happening. And, and you know, to try and keep uh, calm in the boardroom without actually being at the start is difficult because you have to keep a calm head, um, inform the public of what's going on. And, and it, it was difficult to keep everyone informed what was going on because the officials in the boardroom couldn't quite believe what was transpiring yeah, at the start. Got, it, it was, it was a incredible. Comedy of errors. It was, and, and it led to uh, two trainers um, asking if they could come into the boardroom to get an update of what was happening namely uh, trainer de Kock and trainer Snaith. They're obviously concerned with their charges. Uh, they have connections that they need to answer to. And you spoke about transparency earlier on. We, we have an open door policy where if trainers um, request the right or the opportunity to come into the boardroom, we provide them that, um, that opportunity because at the end of the day, they are the, the caretakers for these animals. What is the final version from the NHA in respect of the incidents that transpired and how it affected the result of the race. The incident that transpired, most unfortunate. I don't think anyone could predict what was going to happen. It was just a set of circumstances that, that were completely out of everyone's control. They've happened, we have to live with it. Uh, what we can do to prevent them going forward is um, it's very difficult to pinpoint because horses lose shoes on the way to the start. They spread their car shoes. Horses slip their bridles. You, you cannot predict uh, that a bridle will break or any parts um, of any other equipment uh, that it will break. Very difficult to predict. The riders' lives are at stake, so they, they, they check their equipment on a regular basis. I mean, they, they need to. Obviously, you'd hate to come off a horse uh, at that sort of speed with other horses around you. The trainer's equipment, they also check. They, their, their careers are dependent on, the, on these pieces of equipment um, and the horses that, uh, of course, are fitted with these pieces of equipment. In my humble opinion, a 20-minute delay will have adverse effects on horses. Some will handle it better than others. If horses had performed uh, after the 20-minute delay, then there may, may not have been the same sort of criticism. But from an official's perspective, namely my perspective, I'm never happy when there's a delay. We judged on our races getting off on time, starting on time. We, we keep uh, statistics on each and every uh, region uh, uh, regarding the starting times. 
and, and we are pretty good in that area. We, you know, we have a, a starting time success rate within the two minute bracket of the official time of uh, uh, close to 80%. So for a race to go off 20 minutes uh, late is unheard of. It hasn't happened before. Um, and, and the set of circumstances that prevailed on the day uh, hasn't happened before. The bottom line is that a huge volume of money was put on Hawam to the point where it was actually ridiculous that he should be that short over a mile because mm -hmm. Anton Marcus has always been clear on the fact that his best trip is from 1800 meters upwards even though he's able to win a six but the weight of money I think it's a preposterous thought to think that there could have been any forces in play to prevent Hawam from winning that race. In my opinion, it's laughable, Andrew, that we would have any of these conspiracy theories. Um, I think it's documented what has happened. You, you cannot have any influence on horses losing shoes or horses slipping bridles or bridles um, being broken. Uh, a bushfire um, happening in the close proximity of the race course. It's preposterous that these sort of conspiracy theories have come out, um, and I certainly dismiss them as being just that, conspiracy theories, um, and um, I won't entertain them from a personal perspective. So going forward, the next big feature race in the Cape, obviously you'll have um, races building up to the Sun Met. Is there any inclination on behalf of the NHA to beef up the support structures at the start, or is it just business as usual? Well, we, we've got to be realistic about it. Um, you know, we have our officials on duty. We will have additional uh, handlers on duty at the Met meeting. There are quite a few races on the program and the size of the fields will be greater than, than normal in Cape Town. We'll have more handling staff. We will have additional veterinary surgeons on duty because of the configuration of Kenilworth and the security that takes place on a day like your, your, your son met. Certain areas are no-go areas, so you need additional um, veterinary surgeons so they can get to any stricken horse as soon as possible. Farrier-wise, we will um, we'll be having an additional farrier on duty as well. You know, they have... Um, a lot of horses running on this big day, yeah. so you need to, to have the officials in place. We, we generally have a, um, a, a greater stipendary steward presence. We'll, we'll have the same number that we had at the Queen's Plate meeting, though. We'll fly the chief stops in from the other regions. So we do take cognizance of the fact that it is a big race meeting. There's more at stake than at the other race meetings. But um, as far as the compliments and the duties of the officials go, it's pretty much business as usual. You know, due to the, the nature of the race meeting and uh, the additional races and number of horses participating, we'll, we'll bolster the numbers where we can. But the officials know what they're doing in their, their various roles. And it, for them, it's business as usual. There's just more at stake, obviously.